Hi, this is Justin Simpson, and this is a Gay Movie Dude video essay. In my most recent episode, we took a look at one of my favorite gay movies of all time, Weekend. So today we're going to take a look at a movie that has a similar title, but it's not quite as good. This is Three Day Weekend. Our movie begins right off the bat with two characters packing for a trip. Hey, we gonna hit any clubs this weekend? No clubs, Ace. It's a cabin in the middle of nowhere. Very smooth exposition. Although it's not really made clear how these characters are related, or even who they are, we find out that a group of guys are all headed up to a secluded cabin for a weekend getaway, and are allowed to invite a guest. The man on the cell phone is one of the organizers of the event, and his partner is this guy, who just so happens to hire rent boys for his own personal pleasure. This weekend, the four of us each invited a single friend along. A plain matchmaker? Something like that. Guess who he's going to invite on the trip? This is for today. And uh, this is for the three day weekend. I'm sure that won't cause any drama whatsoever. So when the guys all meet up at the cabin, we are introduced to two new characters, a bookworm and a spiritual nude yoga teacher, who makes it more than clear he's a spiritual person. Namaste. Namaste. You have an amazing aura. Just in case you couldn't figure it out, he's spiritual. The guys then have drinks outside on the porch on the back, and we are suddenly introduced to an eighth character. We'll just call him the college guy. We had to go to this art exhibit. <laughs> so disturbing. <laughs> totally in your face. You couldn't get away from these, these graphic images. I totally thought I was going to throw up. <laughs> it was so gross. <laughs> what was the exhibit? Georgia O'Keeffe's flower paintings. Because vagina equals ew. So because nothing has really happened so far, the guys discuss something I like to discuss. Movies. Isn't it better to have a portrayal of gays suffering than to have no presence of gays in films at all? At least today's gay movies. Which suck. Not the point. At least they cover a wide range of topics and genres. Wow, it's almost like the writer of this film wanted to preach his feelings about queer cinema to the audience through his characters. When night falls upon the cabin, the guys move to the living room. Yes, that's how eventful this movie is. One moment they're talking outside on the back porch, and then the next moment they're talking in the living room. We chose this place to get away from the clubs and the crowds. When you're a little older, you'll appreciate it. That reminds me of where I grew up and why I left. Too bad the director couldn't remind you how to act. There's also something that happens a lot in this film which really makes the lack of direction from the director's end stand out. As you'll see in a scene like this, when one character starts one conversation with another, everyone else just stops and sits around awkwardly until it's their turn to talk. Have you ever tried yoga? But wait, it gets more awkward. The plot finally gets a mini boost when the Rem boy finally arrives. Everyone, this is Andre. Andre? Andre? Acting? So of course the inevitable drama ensues. We agreed early on in our relationship that we could sleep with other men. I know. And we have. We both have. But we don't talk about it. And we don't bring it home. Never at home! Oh dear. Guess who entered an open relationship only to satisfy the one who truly wanted it? So because the movie is jam-packed with multiple characters, the inevitable subplots happens. The spiritual guy and the bookworm hook up. The rent boy and his payee's husband have an awkward conversation. Our monogamous couple have sex outside, the rent boy hooks up with the college boy, and our host couple are having relationship problems. So let me do the math. Multiple characters plus multiple subplots, parentheses, in a gay film equals no main plot to build up to. 
To give the movie credit, though, a couple of the subplots have their own strengths and are in their own ways very sweet. You have the spiritual guy and bookworm who oddly enough fit well together and are quite arguably the best actors in the entire film. Then there's the monogamous couple with the 20-year age difference, one of which survived the AIDS crisis and despite their age look for what's good in their future together. For the two subplots, I found myself actually going along for the ride. But then you have the rest of the movie, which consists mostly of sex, and nothing, and sex, and nothing, and sex, and nothing, and sex, and nothing. I am not saying a movie with multiple subplots can't work, and I'm not saying a movie with multiple sex scenes is bad, but when it's not clear on who we're supposed to be rooting for, and most of the sex scenes within the film don't really advance the relationship of the characters, then the movie falls flat. In the midst of it all, our two main characters, quote-unquote, decide to put aside their arguments and have a three-way with the Rent Boy. The tables turn, however, when our Silver Fox decides he wants to have his turn with the Rent Boy all to himself, thus causing a major shift in their relationship. And I hate to say it, but this is the only real plot point in this movie where anything actually really happens. So the payee of the rent boy decides to head back home, leaving his husband and escort at the cabin, and the rest of the film to play out on its own. And here's the sad part. Nothing really happens after that. The film becomes so monotonous towards the end that I actually waited for another sex scene to happen just to have some kind of action. None of the characters really change, except for our bookworm who gains confidence in himself. In fact, he and our spiritual character are the only two characters in the entire film we actually care about, or have some kind of arc. When this film ended, I knew right away there's going to be a lot of people who are not going to like this movie. Yet for some reason... I was trying to figure out why I personally didn't hate this movie. So when I finished Three Day Weekend, one simple word came to my mind to sum up the entire thing in a nutshell. Book. Three Day Weekend doesn't work as a movie because it's a story that's not meant to be told in the form of film. It's a book. I didn't hate this movie because the characters all show promise as literary characters. What they're saying out loud is not as interesting as what they could possibly be thinking inside during their scenes. Like The Seminarian would work as a play because of its heavy use of dialogue, Three Day Weekend only has success as a book because it has multiple subplots and nine distinct characters that would only come across as more interesting if we got a good insight as to what their inner thoughts are during each scene, and thus giving us a more clear idea of who we're supposed to be rooting for. So my final thoughts are this. There really isn't any reason to buy or rent this movie, even if you're interested in seeing some cute sex scenes with some moderately cute men, chances are you can find better options. And if you're like me, where a story is more interesting, you can skip this. Even if this movie were to come out into a novelization form, it, yes, it might make a good beach read, but instead, I would highly suggest that you pick up my book from the Aquarian Angels series, Aquarian Angels River and Aquarian Angels Lake, available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, iTunes, and Google Play. Click on the card appearing on the screen right now to purchase.